Alright, let's have a look at this question. This question is sent to me from one of the students uh, from Penang. He told me this question is very hard and then I looked into it. This question is really very hard. A lot harder than I could imagine. So I decided to make a short video to discuss with you uh, how to solve this kind of hard questions. I would say this question is a lot harder than the standard k baht questions because k baht sometimes can be quite hard but this question is a lot harder. Uh, especially for SPM student, you do not learn about uh, binomial expansion so for you it might be quite hard but anyways I will try my best to use a simple way to make you understand about how to solve these kind of questions. So let's uh, look into the question first. An artist is planning on mixing together any number of different color from her palette so a mixture result as long as the artist combine at least two color so if the number of possible mixture is less than 500 what is the greatest number of colors the artist could have in her palette so okay at first if you do not know what is happening here so so first i explain what's a palette first so palette you will have something like this and have a circle and then normally the artist will put some color here. Is it can put some yellow color, some green color, some red color, some blue, uh, dark blue, light blue, or some white color here, and a lot more. He can keep on add the different color on the palette here. Okay, so basically right now, uh, yeah, the artist actually planning to do mixing together any of the colors or uh, any of the different colors so they can they can mix like blue and red or blue and green color they can mix any of the color here so the, so a mixture results as long as the, the artist combine at least two colors so right now the artist can actually combine at least two color so i will think at least two color is a keyword here so that's mean he, he can mix two color three color four color and so on so if the number of possible mixture is less than 500 so they want to find a number of possible mixture uh, must be less than 500 so i believe less than 500 is another keyword here what is the greatest number of the color the artist could have in her palette so that's mean we we want to know uh if you keep on mix the color already like uh what is the greatest number of the color the artist could have Okay, so at first you kind of need to find, um, you you need to find out like how to do these kind of questions. So yeah, at the beginning I say it's a permutation. Actually, it's not. This question is a combination, All right? So because I don't think the mixtures of color, we need the arrangement for it. So it's a combination. So let's say I have the one, two, three, four, five. I have five color here. This is just just an example. So if I want to find the mixtures of five color for at least two color, definitely what I would do is I would do five C two within it. So like five C two, if I use a calculator, right, the calculator will tell me I can have ten mixtures. So that's mean if I only use the five color, I want to choose any of two color to mix between each each color. I basically have ten way of doing that. Basically, I can mix something like uh, blue and red, blue and green, blue and yellow and keep on writing maximum I can only have 10 mixtures here so over here they want less than 500 mixtures so definitely I believe uh, the, the palette here is definitely have more than 5 color if, if not that's not possible to have the less than 500 so yeah so we do not know how many color on the palette here so I'm going to call it as N here so we have N different color all right then next thing i want to understand because we know we need to kind of use something like ncrs to do right but because the question say at least two color means what means we can have nc2 so i want to use two color but i can also do nc3 isn't it and then i can also do nc4 isn't it and then because I want to find a total possible way of doing this one, so I, I need to plus all the possible way here. But because this is N, so the number will keep on going NC5, NC6, NC7, and keep on going until the NCN, isn't it? So yeah, this is 
the when the things write like this, it it try to get more and more complicated. And then when I what I know next is all these number plus together must be less than five hundred. Yeah, this is what happened when the question says it's less than five hundred. So at first, when I try to solve this sort of question, right, I try to insert the n c r formula is n factorial over n minus r factorial. R factorial but when I try to insert this formula I realize it's a lot harder than <laughs> and I could imagine because it's I going to take it, it going to take me forever to solve the question like this so I decide not to use this method and then I try to google online uh, most of the website actually teach me about using the series to solve but for SPM student you never learn about series Maybe you will touch a little bit, but I don't think the way you touch is enough for solving this question. So I decide not to use the series methods to solve this kind of question as well. Then, then I, I do a lot of experiment myself, and at last, I find out a person called Pascal, and then they find out a theorem called Pascal triangle. I think Pascal triangle have highly related to the question like this because Pascal triangle is how we find out all the NC zero, NC one, NC two, NC three. So I think, yeah, maybe we can use that methods to solve these kind of questions. But then the problem is, uh, SPM student doesn't touch much about Pascal triangle. Maybe you see that in your textbook, but I don't think you will go deep into it. So here I just uh. Uh, do a quick review on the Pascal triangle. Pascal triangle basically you have a series of number, and the number actually can write out in the triangle patterns. This is the reason why they call Pascal triangle. Alright, so let's write some number here. Okay, so and then you have different row here. Each of the row represents by different n value, the power of n value. So like n equals to zero, uh, n equals to one. You have different row n equals to 2 n equals to 3 n equals to 4 and so on your n value can keep on plus so this triangle have infinity one because n can go until n so the so this triangle can be extremely infinity big so what happened when n equals to 0 you have the first row where, which is just 1 when n equals to 1 your second row is just double 1 so the outer layer here is must be all one here must be covered by one so the first digit is one and last digit is one <laughs> so okay you, you couldn't see when zero and one but you can start to see when n equals two first one is one and then the middle number is just these two number add up together which is two and then this is one and then when n equals three this one is just like one and then this one will be three three and one because you add up one and two you get three right Two and one you get three right the last digits must be one first digits must be one so yeah when n equals to four first is must be one and then add up you got four add up you get six add up you get four and you get one and a lot of students have no idea what is this number represent uh, i can give you some idea so if i want to do x plus y let's say n is two right because this is power of n here uh, I don't want you x, y because some students will get confused. I get use a and b, power of n, right? So this is the meaning of n here. So if a plus b power of two, a lot of students because we're n equals two, right? A lot of students can quickly do this one, uh, which is n square, uh, a square plus two ab plus b square. So this is what you get, right? But if you see carefully here, here have an invisible one, and then you have an invisible, uh, not like invisible, you have visible two. And then you have an invisible one. This is the coefficient of each of the number here. So it's one, two, one. So do you see one, two, one? So if I want to use a Pascal triangle to solve the highest power, let's say power of three here, then from the number here, at least I see when n equals three, I have one, three, three, one, right? But how am I going to use that? It's quite interesting. Okay, you have one, three. 3, 1. And then middle must have a plus, okay? Because you can see the middle have a plus, isn't it? And then we add a plus here. Okay, how you can do is the first one is a power of 3. And then this a power of 2. This a power of 1. This a power of 0. And then this one, the, for the b term, it start from b power of 0. And then b power of 1. b power of 2. b power of 3. So if I rewrite the everything, 1 and b power of 0, I can cancel it out. Just a cubed. And then this one is 3a square b and then plus 3ab square. 
the last one, 0 will get cancelled, right? Plus b cubed. So you see, I can expand the a plus b power of 3 quickly by just using the Pascal triangle. Okay, so therefore, if you today you ask you ask me to expand about like a plus b power of 4, that's possible if as long as I have all these coefficient number here. But this is not my objective of of this video because I want to solve that questions. So now my question is because n can go like extremely big, like n equals to 58. So impossible, I need to do until like uh, 59 time, right? In order to get n equals to 58. So def therefore, definitely we have a way to straight away find this number, isn't it? So let, let me just go one more, n equals to five here. So we kind of have one, five, 10, 10, uh, five, one. Okay, so just randomly, if I want to find this number, how am I going to find this number? So what I will do is I will calculate like this. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I start from 0. And what is this uh, yellow color number? It's basically is my R value. So therefore, if I want to find the 10 here, I basically know this is N, right? N, C, R, so remember? So my N is 5. My R is 3. So NC3, you type in the calculator, you should get 10 here. So if you see carefully, you should know the first term here is 5C0. Then the, first, then the second term is 5C1. Then the third term will be 5C2. This one will be 5C3. This one will be 5C4. And then the last one will be 5C5. And then if you not believe me, you can try to type this R. Uh, 5C0 things in your calculator, you will get exactly the same number here. And then you realize this group of the number is quite familiar. It's similar to what we want at the very beginning, right? Because we kind of need to plus from NC2 plus NC3 plus NC4. Let's say N is 5. This is exactly the things we want, right? It's exactly quite similar here. Okay, so now the next thing coming to my mind is, but how am I going to plus them? Because if I want to plus them, right, means what? I need to plus all this number. So I might, I must find a pattern on how to plus this number. Then I try to see the first number is 1. If I do 1 plus 1, I get 2. I get 1 plus 2 plus 1, I get 4. And then the next one, if I plus together, I get 8. And then I start to see the pattern of this one. I realized the first one is 2 power of 0. The next one is 2 power of 1. This one is 2 power of 2. This one is 2 power of 3, and so on. And then the next thing I find out is quite interesting is this power here actually is follow the number of n here. So you realize third row here actually give me 8, right? When n equals to 3. So this reason why is 2 power of 3. So if you ask me what number I will get if I add up this row here, this is 5, right? n is 5, then I will guess it's 2 power of 5. So you add all number together, it's just 32. Right, so if I understand of this one, so when I go until n is equals to n here, I should know this one is 2 power of n, and then I will get some number here. So then I can kind of use the uh, this 2 power of n to find the closer number. Because, because for this question, I want the sum up is basically less than 500, right? Then I will try to ask myself, if I want to get the 2 power of n must be less than 500, right? Yeah, it's possible and actually it's quite easy. But this question is not that easy because it's what? It's not start plus from zero, right? Because just now they say at least two color. That means they want to exclude the first two term. The first term and the second term, they want to exclude it because they start from NC2 and then, and then NC3 and so on. So therefore, if I want to exclude the first term, first term is quite easy. It's one. So I can just or minus one. Because first term is always 1, right? If you see carefully from Pascal triangle. And the second term, okay, second term here, this is 5C1. If I take the second term from n equals to 4, it will be 4C1. If you type in the calculator, 5C1 is basically equal to 5. If I do 4C1, it's actually equals to 4. It means nc1, I will get n, isn't it? So therefore, I can say I just minus an n. 
if you find that uh, how to get nc1 equals to n you can use the formula solve it you will get n here because like n factorial minus n minus 1 factorial and 1 factorial you can solving this one n factorial equals to n multiply n minus 1 factorial right and then n minus 1 factorial 1 factorial is just 1 you can ignore you cancel it out you get n all right so this is the reason why i can say this is n if you don't feel comfortable you can still write the nc1 here okay so that's mean this is what i want for this question i want to find out the two power of n when i minus one i minus the number of n must be less than 500 so this is exactly what this question want so okay then i will just do some simple estimate because yeah if i get something like this it's quite easy for me to get my final answer already so yeah so what i will do is i try about two power of eight because i know two power of eight two five six and then I know 2 power of 9 is basically 5, 1, 2. So this 2 is kind of closer than this one. Uh, but the problem is, if I choose 5, 1, 2, I minus this 2 number, I must get less than 500. So I will kind of do a simple testing here. So if I choose n equals to 9 here, by doing this one, I will do 2 power of 9 minus 1 minus 9. All right, then see what do I get here. So I will get uh, minus 10, I will get 5, 0, 2 which is not accepted because they must be less than 500. So in these cases, I cannot choose n equals to 9 because it's more than 500 already. Then I choose n equals to 8. Definitely it's less than 500 because this one will be 256. Then I take the 256 minus 1 minus 8. Then I use the calculator. I will get uh, 256 minus 9 here. I will get 247. Yeah, which is just nice, which is less than 500 because Remember the question says what? The question actually asks you to find the greatest number. Because just now, we try n equals to 9, but cannot write because it's more than 500. So the greatest number I can get is n equals to 8. Okay, but in this kind of question, how am I going to uh, show the working to examiner to mark to, so that examiner can give me mark? So if I do this kind of question myself, what I will do is, since I know the answer is a, n equals to 8 already, so I will just do, okay, 8c2 plus 8c3 plus 8c4. I will plus all of them until 8c8, and then I will say it's equals to 247. All right, so I will say, therefore, the greatest number of color is equals to a of course if you think that maybe this question give you four mark or five mark you want to show more if i want to show more what i will do over here is i will show is if n equals to nine i will show the nine term things which is nine c2 plus nine c3 plus nine c4 plus until nine c9 i will tell the examiner is equals to five zero o five o i mean five o two and then I will write a rejected here to show that actually I do some uh, test and error, uh, try and error uh, to get the n equals to 8 here. Yeah, this is one of the way. But the purpose of this video is I want you to able to solve the similar question if coming out in the exam next time. This is the reason why I make the video. Not only you can solve this question, but I want you to able to solve the similar question if something like this coming out in the exam next time. So, so what I want you to get from this video is, first thing, I want you to understand how to write out the Pascal triangle by yourself. And then I also want you to understand what is the meaning of each of these number here. It's basically like, this one is basically like if n equal to three, this one is three C zero, three C one, three C two, 3c3 so at least you know the idea what is this number and what if today you want to sum up uh, each of the row here you should know is basically is equals to 2 power of n depend what is your row here so in this video 2 power of n uh, is very important because what because if today i'm going to make this uh question even harder i say the possible mixtures color must be uh, less than 10,000 example less than 10,000 and then okay so and then I say mixing same question at least two color so that means I want to do nc2 plus nc3 plus until 
and CN must be less than 10,000. But because you understand from this video, so what you want to test first is you want to find out the N value, right? So you should know is 2 power of N, and then you want to minus the first term, which is 1. And then you want to minus the second term, which is, you can say NC1, or you should always say N, which is less than 10,000. So what if today they want to start from NC3, they want to make sure uh, at least three color. Then you need to minus one more term, which is NC2. So you, you, you get what I mean. If you don't like N, like what I say, you can say minus NC1. And the, if you don't like one, you can say NC0, which is the first term, second term, and third term. If the question change until they want to start from the fourth term, which is NC3 here, then you just need to minus all the term in front here. Okay, this is, uh, this is another meaning of at least, right? Because just now they say at least two color, that means you need to minus uh, zero color and one color, isn't it? So if I say at least three color here, three color here, so you need to minus when n equals to zero, n equals to one, and n equals to two, right? This is the reason why you see I write the nc0, nc1, nc2, and then will be less than uh, 10,000. Of course, you're not going to uh, uh, try to solve the question manually, right? So what I will do is I will do a trial and error, try and error, or maybe I will call it at esti estimate because I will just try to see two power what will get very close to this one. If you don't like to try, you can also use log, right? You learned about log before, right? Let's say I say two power of n must be less than ten thousand, and then I can add log for both sides, right? So log two power of n and then log 10,000 and then I can move the n in front and then become n multiplied log 2 and then I move the log 2 to the other side so log 10,000 divided by log 2 so I can by using this one I can estimate uh, what is my n value here then I type the calculator log 10,000 divided by log 2 then you will get uh, less than 13.29 so you should know okay then I will try n 13 isn't it less than 13.29 then i will try oh what if 2 power of 13 then type in the cal my calculator 2 power of 13 here then is about uh 8192 i guess it's closer than 10,000. then i will try 2 power of 14. then 2 power of 14 here is uh 16384 and then because you want to minus the first three term, right? Definitely, I don't think the first three term will minus up to like 6,000 something. So therefore, I definitely will not choose the 2 power of 14 here. I will take 13 as the result. So yeah, this is what I want you to learn from this video. So that means in the future, if you have some similar question, at least you know the sum of each of the row is equals to 2 power of n. The meaning of sum of the each of the row basically is start from the nc0. Remember, not start from nc1, it start from the nc0, nc1, nc2, nc3, depend which row you have. So yeah, this video is more than 20 minutes, oh my god. So. Yeah, I hope I I doesn't waste about uh I doesn't waste your twenty minutes in your life to learn nothing here. So yeah, I hope you at least you get something from this video. And if you still don't understand, you still find it very confused, you can try to comment at the comment section below. I will try to reply you whenever I I have time. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.